Big shout out to my man Terry Watkins. JT, what church do you pastor at? I don't pastor at no church. I don't preach at no church. I am not a preacher. I am not an ordained minister once again. You know, people find it hard to believe that minister of music know the word of God. And that, to me, that's sad. Because people just look at the music part. They don't understand minister of music. That means you have to know the word of God. Yeah. And I, I, I tell this to people all the time. Many man, PP Drawings, Orange Flavor, my boy Jeffrey Jordan, so many different other minister of music I know, know the word of God awesome with it. Because everybody think that everybody is called to preach. When they don't understand that we should all be ministers for God in so many ways. Just because we might stand on the word of God and speak on it every day, higher than everybody else. I mean, I don't mean to be saying higher like that. We speak on it and we're not scared because we know the word for ourselves and we are not ashamed of the gospel as a minister of music. If people would quit depending so much on their pastor, a Sunday school teacher, a Bible school teacher, to do everything for them, we should all be picking up the word of God and knowing it. That was the whole purpose of him saying study, to show that I self-approve. Can't nobody study for me. I have to study for myself. That's why I know the word of God. That's why I'm able to get on YouTube and do videos. No, I am not a pastor. I am not an ordained minister. I am a child of God who studies just like God tells us to study. Everybody should know something about the Bible. Psalm can speak you know, speak well, and some don't think they can speak well. Just like in, when Moses kept telling God his mouth wasn't right for the, to be the speaker. And God said, Moses, didn't I not make the mouth? And he, he said, okay, I'll send you Aaron. So anyway, God sent him Aaron to do the speaking. See, God made us. He created us. We are all the image of Christ. And we should know the word of God. Even if I wasn't a minister of music, I would still know the word of God because I started studying the word of God a long time ago. Before I even got serious with this being a minister of music thing. That's why now as a minister of music, the word comes first with me. Forget about the piano notes. That ain't going to get me into heaven. I got to say that again. I need to know the word because I need to know what this praising him is all about. Oh, that's why David was so creative. David and others wrote the books of songs. They had to, they had, to, David was a great musician. Bible say David was a skillful, handsome and skillful musician. Played very well. That's why David could write songs. How are we going to write songs if we don't know nothing about the word of God? See, we're too busy being caught up on playing. Every minister of music should know the word of God. And I'm tired of people telling me I done missed my calling as a pastor. That ain't that. That's people talking. Trust me, people, I follow God. And when I look at many, man, I can guarantee you people say the same thing. Man, you a pastor. There's too many people pastoring already. Pastoring because somebody told them they're supposed to be a preacher and it wasn't God. Man, God selects who is going to be the pastors, not people. God put people in position. Oh, the qualifications of a deacon, the qualifications of a deacon's wife, minister of music, pastors and bishops on down. We all should know the word of God. And, I, you know, I, I have to make people understand it because people are going to always tell you what they see in their eyes. Now I have not missed no calling. As a child of God, I know the word of God. Listen to what I'm saying, the child of God. Forget about me, period, being a minister of music. If I wasn't a minister of music, I'm still a child of God who's supposed to be studying for myself. I tell people all the time, what are you doing in your life? Who are you living for? Are you waiting on everybody else to teach you the word of God? You sure want to know about things for yourself. That way you can know when these false prophets are prophesizing all wrong to you. That way when these preachers are teaching you wrong, you will know the word for yourself. 
But how are you going to know something for yourself if you don't study it for yourself? We lazy. We, we weak. We depend on everybody to do everything for us. Remind me of the Pharisees in so many ways. So as a child of God, we all should know the Bible. It's not hard to pick up the Bible, and it don't take a rocket scientist to figure the Bible out. Jesus did not make the Bible that complicated, y'all. Come on. We just too lazy and we don't want to read. And if there is something you don't understand, I, I tell you like this, if you pray to God before you even start reading, see, the problem is everybody just want to peek they want to pick up the Bible and just scan through, just go to something. Okay, let me look at this. Read probably 20 minutes, put the Bible back up, didn't get nothing out of it. First thing you do is pray before you even start reading. God, send me somewhere in the Bible. Show me where I need to be at. Give me a topic. Instead of just picking up the Bible and scanning through pages. God will direct you in the Bible where you need to go. And he will give you the word. He will show you understanding. Oh, that's why I hate it. I hate all this false teaching that's going on. Because people that, that read and have a question, they, they go to church with a question, and then they go back and tell you, I don't know. Good God Almighty. That's why we have our Sunday school teachers and, and, and Bible, school, Bible school teachers and, and things. Because there's going to be some stuff you don't know in the Bible. So the Bible, sometimes the Bible gets so deep, it's almost like you just got a oh, picture in your mind. What happened? I'll give you a great example. Of, uh, when, the, when the Bible speaks of Melchizedek or Melchizedek where Abraham first paid tithes to, you can say to yourself, whatever happened to Melchizedek or Melchizedek? Is he the same as Jesus? Was he Jesus? See, that's deep for some people because somebody else don't even know who Melchizedek is or if you want to pronounce it Melchizedek. Who is that? Why did Abraham pay tithes to him? Is he Jesus? And then you see in the Bible Jesus in the order of Melchizedek. Long on the scene before Jesus even got here. But then you're going to hear some people say they're the same person. It's a lot of conflict in the Bible. See, that's how you cut a confusion down. You read for yourself. Study for yourself, not to get off subject about Melchizedek, Melchizedek, because he was named the same as Jesus was named. And he was born without a mother and a father. His days were never begin and never end. It's like a mystery. What happened to him? See, that's stuff to think about. But how would you know what I'm talking about if you don't study for yourself? Because I guarantee you ain't heard a whole lot of preachers even talk about Melchizedek or Melchizedek. However you want to pronounce it. So my point is, you got to study for yourself. Yes, I know the word of God. No, I am not a pastor. I'm not an ordained minister. I ain't never been ordained a day in my life. <laughs> and people think you got to be all these Bible scholars and you got to go to school for this and go to school for that. Jesus can teach you the word by himself. You just don't want to spend no time with him. He teaching me just like he teach many man, just like he teach PP drawings. And then when you got a great leader, a great pastor, that's just even more better. That's teaching you the right way. How can you, oh man, it's a, one of my favorite movies is the one that Denzel did called The Book of Eli. Great message in that movie to me, just my opinion. He carried the Bible, what he say, for 30 years. He memorized the whole Bible and wrote it out when he was dying. Had the man to write everything he said when he was laying on the table getting ready to get up out of here. See, a lot of people miss that in that movie. He said, I walked around with it for 30 years. Read it every day. Think about us if we could read the Bible every day for 30 years. Lord said the same, we'd be around that long. If you read the Bible every day, that's what I do. I'm in a process right now with my man, Minister Robinson, showing me how he, when he went to school, and how they broke the Bible down, and how they, they show you how to learn the Bible in six and seven months. The whole Bible. The chronological order. See, people don't even look at the chronological order. I study that. I don't only read the King James, but I go with the Hebrew. I look at stuff. Because I like that's how you know what's really going on. Because in every interpretation, there is something different. Some get left out. That's why people get confused about the Bible. That's why you got this conflict now about the, the secret rapture. <laughs> it's a whole lot of conflicts in the Bible. But see, that's why I study for myself. I know when a pastor is lying to me. 
I know when somebody's false prophesizing to me. I know the word for myself. Not saying I'm no top, not top of the line Bible scholar. God taught me the Bible just like he is teaching me, like he taught me how to play the piano. People be telling me, boy, you're a bad boy on that piano. I said, well, that's what I want people to say about me with the word. Tell a bad boy with that word. Forget about the piano. And I'm getting there. I'm waking up every day studying this word. That's why I'm not doing no tutorials. Sorry. Somebody left me a real crazy comment just last night. Oh, you got 20, 30 minutes now, and you can't put a video up on teaching us no more songs. Boy, you cold-blooded. I said, get up off my page. You ain't got to click on my page no more, and I mean it out of love. And this big shout-out to everybody. No, I'm not a minister, but we all should be ministers in so many ways for God. Don't knock and hate on me because I know the word of God for myself. You too can do the same thing. And it ain't it don't take long. You got Bible is all about stories and Jesus showing us how to live our life and examples. The most thing I studied on alone was Apostle Paul. Because Paul to me is just one of the greatest persons in the Bible of how to be a great Christian. And I'm not showing favoritism on Apostle Paul, but I read a lot about Paul. I love to read and study on Paul, the letters to the churches. I look at life and what I'm dealing with, and I look in the Bible. And what you will find out in the Bible, there is nothing new we're going through. It ain't happened before. Solomon said that. There is nothing new under the sun, and it ain't. There is a story for everything we deal with in the Bible. Like Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 3, there is a time and a season for everything that we go through. God bless you.